Welcome to a second video on the second derivative test. This video provides additional examples using transcendental functions. Let's go and do a quick review of the second derivative test. The second derivative test is a way to find relative extrema using the second derivative instead of the first derivative. And here's the idea. If we find the critical numbers of the function and then determine the sign of the second derivative at those critical numbers, that'll tell us the concavity of the function. So if the second derivative is positive at the critical number, that means the function will be concave upward, therefore we'd have to have a relative min at that critical number. If the second derivative is negative or less than zero at the critical number, that means it's concave downward, therefore at that critical number we must have a relative max. So it can be a lot less work to determine relative extrema by determining the sign of the second derivative. If the second derivative equals zero at the critical number, the test fails, and we do have to use the first derivative test. So let's outline our steps to follow. We'll first find the critical numbers of the function by determining where the first derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. Then we'll find the corresponding y values of the critical numbers. Then we'll find the second derivative and determine the sign of it at the critical numbers. And then again, if the second derivative is positive, that means it's concave up, so we have a relative minimum at the critical number. And if the second derivative is negative or less than zero, the, the function's concave down, therefore we'd have a relative max at that critical number. Let's go ahead and give it a try. First off, this function has a domain from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the first derivative. That would be one minus one over x. This is undefined at zero, but it's not in the domain, so we'll set the derivative equal to zero and solve this equation. Let's add one over x to both sides. If we want, we can put this over one. We have a proportion, so x times one would be x must equal one times one. X equals one is the only critical number. So what we'll do now is find the y coordinate of the point on the function where x equals one. So we need to find f of one. Well, here's f. That would be one minus natural log one. Natural log one is equal to zero, so the point is one, one. So now what we're gonna do is find the second derivative and determine the sign of it when x is equal to one. So let's go ahead and rewrite the first derivative here. The first derivative was equal to one minus, this would be x to the power of negative one. So the second derivative will be zero and then minus negative one x to the negative two and that would be positive x to the negative two, or one over x squared. Well, f double prime of one, our critical number, is equal to one over one squared, which is one. That's positive. What that means is the function is concave up at that critical number. Well, if it's concave up, we'd have a relative minimum at x equals one. So let's write that again. We have a relative minimum of one at x equals one. Remember, sometimes you can express relative extrema as an ordered pair. Sometimes other textbooks want it written out like this. Let's go ahead and verify with a graph. Here's the point one, one, and we can see that it is a relative minimum or a low point on this graph. Let's go ahead and try another example. We'll start by finding the critical numbers, so let's find the first derivative. Two cosine x. Now here we have to apply the chain rule. That would be negative sine two x times two. This is always defined on this interval, so let's rewrite this and then see if we can set it equal to zero and solve. We have two cosine x minus two sine two x equals zero. Now we have a little bit of a problem here because we have two different functions and this one's a double angle. But if you remember, sine two x is equal to two sine x cosine x. So we'll use this identity and do a substitution here. And that would give us two cosine x minus two times two sine x cosine x, or four sine x cosine x. The reason that's helpful is now we can factor out two cosine x, and we're left with one minus two sine x equals zero. So we want to know when cosine x equals zero, and also when one minus two sine x equals zero. Now we're only considering this interval. Cosine x equals zero when x equals pi over two. Let's go ahead and solve this for sine x. So we'll subtract one and then divide by negative two. 
that would give us sine x equals one half. Well, that would be a 30 degree reference angle in the first and second quadrant, so that would give us x equals pi over six and x equals five pi over six. You may want to verify these, but these are our three critical numbers in this given interval. So now we have to find the corresponding y coordinate of these critical numbers by evaluating the function at these x values. Let's go ahead and go to the next screen and do that. I'll go ahead and put these in order. We know that the sine of pi over six is equal to one half, so two times one half, that would equal one, plus the cosine of two times pi over six, that'd be pi over three, is equal to one half. So we'd have three halves for the corresponding y value. Two times the sine of pi, that'd be two times one, that would give us two, plus the cosine of pi is equal to negative one, so that would give us a value of one when x is pi over two. And for f of five pi over six, we're gonna have one plus one half, or three halves again. Okay, now we have to determine the sine of the second derivative. Okay, so now we have to determine the sine of the second derivative at each of these critical numbers. Now, I didn't show how to find this second derivative. Let's go ahead and do that now. If you go back to the previous screen, we're gonna use this form of the first derivative to determine the second derivative. So we have f prime of x equals two cosine x minus two sine two x. So the derivative of this, or the second derivative, is going to equal negative two sine x minus two times, the derivative of sine two x will be cosine two x times two, so we have negative two sine x minus four cosine two x. So that's where the second derivative came from. Now we'll enter this into the calculator and determine the sine of the second derivative at these critical numbers. Make sure you're in radian mode, I know I already am. So we'll go ahead now and enter in our critical numbers. First one is pi over six. Second derivative is negative. And then we'll type in pi over two. That's positive. And then five pi over six. And that's negative, so it's negative, positive, and then negative. So that means the function's concave down so that we have a relative max. Here it's concave up, so relative min. Concave down and the relative max. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and verify this with a graph. Notice we have two relative maximums of three halves at pi over six and five pi over six. We have a relative minimum of one at pi over two. This verifies our work, and this is how you can use the second derivative to determine relative extrema. Thank you for watching.